So let's go ahead and begin modeling our rings. So let's jump onto a new layer and we'll add in the base for our ring. Now what we're going to use is we're going to use a mesh torus. So we'll go Shift A, add in a mesh torus. And by pressing F6 or in our options down here, we're going to click Use Int X Controls which means we're going to set the interior and exterior dimensions rather than um, change the radiuses. Now the defaults of 1 and 0 0.5 will work fine for this. So now we want to go tab into edit mode and SZ 1.5 and we'll make sure we delete the interior vertices. So I'll just select the inside ones and we'll go X vertices and now we get a nice ring shape so if we go add in a solidify modifier and we'll change this to 0 0.0223 should be about right um, yeah it'll be thick enough anyway you can change the thickness to suit your preference and we also press Control 2 to get in a subsurf level 2 modifier and check optimal display. So we'll make sure that we call this here ring for reference. And we can hide that for now. We want to add in a diamond. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into File, User Preferences, and jump over to our Add ons menu. If you come down to mesh, you'll find a um, a tool called Extra Tools, or where is it? Uh, oh, up here, Add Mesh, sorry. Add Mesh. Add Mesh Extra Objects, found it. And make sure that it is checked. So now we can go Shift A, Add Mesh extra objects gemstones and we're not going to check diamond we're going to use gem because it gives us a much nicer look so to create our diamond we're going to go into edit mode and we're going to scale this down along the z-axis so it's a bit thinner we're going to extrude the top up to give us a nice little lip around it and we're also going to add in some edge loops around the edges and one more now I'm using control R to add in those edge loops so we can now come in and select all of these so if, we, if we now go S shift Z we can scale these out and we get a nice circular shape fantastic there we go and we now have our diamond model make, also make sure that it's shaded flat if it's shaded smooth well we can see we've got some normal facing the wrong way but um, it doesn't look like a diamond you need to make sure it's on shading flat so I'm going to call this one here diamond minimize all these okay so if I go alt H and we bail our ring we want to scale this down and we want to position it by rotating 90 degrees move it over here somewhere we'll scale it down a bit more let's we'll position it in between our faces here so about that size should be good maybe a little smaller and bring it through until it's only just showing just like that that way we know we get a nice smooth edge fantastic so if we go control A we can go apply the scale the rotation and the location which will reset our origin back to here and we can now duplicate these around our ring so the way we're going to duplicate them around 
is we're actually going to add in an empty we're shift a add empty and we'll use that as an offset for an array modifier cool so we need to take this up to I think it's about 16 of those and rotate this 22.5 degrees around the Z axis. And you can see 15, not enough, so 16, and that will give us enough diamonds to go around our ring. Cool. So the next step is to model the diamond holder groove. The way we do this is we simply select the two inner base loops and we will extrude these we want to extrude them inwards so what we do is we simply go Alt S and we scale these in till it's about like so and perhaps scale this middle one in a bit as well awesome now it's a little too smooth so we'll sharpen this up a bit obviously you don't want it too sharp but sharp enough that it's not going to interfere with anything and just like that that is fantastic now we have our groove in our ring so we can begin making the diamond holder now the diamond holder is it's going to be basically just a little notch in the ring so we can actually make it grip the diamonds because we can't have the it, we can't have it going through the diamonds because that will give quite a few errors. I mean when the light when the rays of light are shone into the diamonds, you don't want them hitting another object. You want them to bounce around inside and then come back out. To treat them like some nice core sticks. So we will shift D to duplicate that. And we will du also duplicate the diamonds. If you select the original ring, we'll just hide that for now. And we'll select the new ring and then shift select the new diamonds and go Control J. So now we have the solid mesh. We can begin making the diamond hole. Alright. So let's go Control R on the one side of diamond and then Control R on the other. So that will give us a nice split that we can use. And I'll also make sure that I smooth these out. Just a nice, so about there should be nice. So now we can now delete all of the points that are not touching the ring. That includes those as well. Fantastic. Shade that smooth and we'll also make sure we go merge first and last. And we're at control two to add in a subsurf modifier. Now you can see it's not quite lining up so we've got to make sure that we line all of these up um, so that they join otherwise it won't quite won't quite work all that well so I'll start by selecting these and I'm going to go scale them out just a fraction and down a little just so that they don't intersect with the actual ring and now we can line these up If you're having trouble, make sure you just turn on the array modifier in edit mode. And as I can see, these are actually lining up. Our problem appears to be in the distance merge distance. So we change that from 0 0.01 to 0 0.002.
that has smoothed it all out nicely. Okay, let's begin joining our ring to our mesh. So let's select the top of the diamond ring. We'll delete that. We no longer need that. And we'll press L over this bit and we'll just push it in just a fraction. Scale it up a little just so that it will um, not be touching the ring or not be touching the diamond dummy. Fantastic. Let's, we can now go to side view, turn that off in edit mode and we'll join this up to the mesh. So we'll select these, let's go you can add in as much as necessary, as much extra polys as necessary. I can see we're going to need to fill these and go subdivide three cuts along each one. And with that, we can now should have enough faces. I just recalculated the normals there. Uh, they weren't quite lining up. You could recalculate the normals with Control N, as I mentioned before. Now there is a tool to make it a lot easier to join things up like, like this, which is W loop tools and then bridge, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to use it the old fashioned way. Make sure it's nice and easy to follow. Cool. Now, one thing I've noticed is it's very smooth coming in there. Let's sharpen that up a little. So, Control R, sharpen that up like that. And I'm also going to go Shift Alt S. Just to Shift Alt S, by the way, will just make it a nice circle. And perhaps even if I go control plus and we go oops select all of that we can bring them out a little okay so that's alt H to unhide everything and that is looking quite nice. I'm I'm liking the way this looks. Uh, you can see we need a couple of little adjustments, so we'll just select these edges, and we'll go S Shift Z just to smooth that out a fraction. And this one, this one, S Shift Z. By the way, uh, period on your keyboard will make it rotate around your 3D cursor, comma will make it rotate around or pivot around your mesh, I should say. Cool. So that is our ring made. Just just for ease of use, let's select all of that and shift select our empty and we'll parent it with control P. Just so that way we can move the move the empty and we'll move the ring at the same time. And one thing I forgot to do is make sure we call that um, holder. Cool. Now I'm just going to quickly save this as file save as let's go stage 3 Good idea to save it as you go, by the way. 